Dear friends, in recent days, there has been an in inauguration of a complex of three buildings, three temples of three religions. This is called the house of the Abrahamic religions, Muslims, Jewish, and Catholic. One mosque, one synagogue, and one Catholic chapel. This is in the United Arab Emirates. This is in the United Air Emirates in Abu Dhabi. And the reason is to bring about a, a program and I witness to the rest of the world, three religions together to proclaim peace, to proclaim peace and unity among religions. Now the question is, because they say these are the three Abrahamic religions descending from Abraham, the question is, do they accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as God, as div divinity? That's the question. And the other question is, they will be united Will they also be witnessing to other religions and calling other, other religions to join in this plan of global worship and global unity and global peace? We will study in relation to the Holy Scriptures how we proclaim the gospel by accepting the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by worshiping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit also. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us with the presence and guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for your blessing for this message that we share from this place today. We thank you so much, dear Father, and we pray for your protection. In the name of your Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. My dear brother and sister, this message is for you. You might belong in another denomination or even religion, but this message is for you because salvation comes through the Jewish nation. Salvation comes through the Lord Jesus who was a Jewish person. He was a Jew and he was God himself in human flesh. And today we want to share this message by beginning reading from the spirits of prophecy. There is this quote that is found in Testimonies for the Church, volume eight, page 254. It says, in the great closing work, we shall meet with perplexities that we know not how to deal with, but let us not forget that the three great powers of heaven are working, that a divine hand is on the wheel, and that God will bring his promises to pass. He will gather from the world a people who will serve him in righteousness. So we are coming to the final events, and we will have to meet with perplexities and very difficult times a time of trouble is coming such as never was. But the three great powers of heaven are working on our side. Who are those three great powers from heaven? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God whom we worship. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are the three great powers of heaven on our side helping us. But as, as, as I speak, all religions together, they are gathering together to promote peace and unity. And these are different denominations. And these are Christians from all over Malaga, this is a city, will pray for unity and peace. Do they believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, they do. Do they preach? 
and accept the Lord Jesus as God and Savior. They, yes, they do. But they are uniting to promote Sunday as a day of worship, and that's not true. According to the commandments of God, the seventh day is the Sabbath, Saturday. And this is the only day that has been hallowed, that has been declared holy by God. And this is the day that has the seal of the living God. This is the day in which we worship the creator, in which we worship our Lord Jesus also, the redeemer and creator, in which we worship the Holy Spirit also. So this is all denominations coming together, following after the beast, the Roman power, and they are having a week of prayer. And this is something that happens every year in January. And they hold these meetings from January the 18th to the 25th. And they say, this is a week in which Christians from all over the world pray together because as explained by the ecumenical delegation of the diocese for the world to believe it is necessary to work and pray for the unity of all disciples of Jesus. So they say, for the whole world to believe. And this is another gathering, week of prayer in commemorated, is commemorated with an ecumenical celebration in Maracay. Catholics, evangelicals, Orthodox, Lutherans, Anglicans, Presbyterians and Pentecostals gathered at the Nuestra Señora de la Asunción Cathedral, located in San Jacinto Urbanization in Maracay, for the ecumenical celebration regarding the week of prayer for the unity of the Christians. So the purpose is to bring all denominations together in an ecumenical global agenda and following after the beast. The meeting served as a space for the devotees to pray for all the followers of Jesus and their churches in addition to sending a message of unity, peace and love, as well as expressing their faith in God. Why do they, why, why do they follow after the beast? The beast is not just, is not a monster, it's not a dragon. The beast is a superpower. It's the Roman, Roman power that commands all nations to worship on Sunday. The purpose is unity to bring peace on the world. And something happened following this week of prayer. A few, a few days after in the United States, uh, in Kentucky, there was a revival in Asbury, Asbury University. And they say, this is the worship that does not stop. This is a, uni a university. And this was like a marathon. It ran for 16 days, 24 hours, 24 hours, 16 days, nonstop, continual praising and worship and praying. Thousands of people continue to flock to the Asbury University. This is a chapel and they join in worship and prayer and confession. And people came from all over the world, from many countries. And this is a small country town with only 6,000 people population in this country town. And then come thousands of people into a small country town and for 16 days, nonstop. And it says, Asbury Revival sparks movements at other Christian colleges. And this is a Fox News. They say this is the Holy Spirit working. But is it the Holy Spirit doing this? Because the final confrontation is between the, the commandments of man and doctrines of man against the commandments of God and his law. In John chapter 14, verse 15, this is a promise that God, the Lord Jesus gives to his people who keep the commandments, who love the Lord Jesus and keep his commandments. The Holy Spirit will come to them. The Lord Jesus will send the Holy Spirit. 
in John chapter 14, verse 15 says, if ye love me, keep my commandments, including the Sabbath commandment to worship on the Sabbath on Saturday, the seventh of the week, as it is written in the 10 commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou lay by and do all thy work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, Jehovah thy God. So the Lord Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And then it says, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So this is the promises that those who keep the commandments of God are those who love the Lord Jesus. And therefore the Lord Jesus will give them the Holy Spirit. But why so many people reject the Holy Spirit? And then this person here, Anne Graham Lotz, says, Ausbury University Revival could be the latter rain. Remember, we are hoping for the latter rain as it happened in Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples, to the early church, and they began to speak in other tongues and to heal, but who was doing the healing? It was the Holy Spirit healing and doing all the marvelous miracles. But this lady, Anne Graham Lott, daughter of the late evangelist, evangelist Billy Graham and the author of many Christian books, she wrote on her blog that the Asbury revival could be the sign of the latter rain before Jesus returns and that she is praying for revival in hearts of the people of, in the people of God. But is that a true revival? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse nine, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Even his prayer. To him that doesn't want to obey the commandments, the 10 commandments, including worshiping the creator on the seventh day, Saturday, the Sabbath of the Lord, of Jehovah. So if they are not receiving the 10 commandments, the Holy Spirit has called them to worship on the Sabbath, but they reject it, then their prayer becomes abomination and they cannot receive the Holy Spirit, neither the latter rain neither the latter rain, but whose spirit will they receive if they proclaim a, this different gospel, a gospel of love and peace and safety for these worlds. But according to the word of God, the prayer of those people who reject the 10 commandments, the 10, full 10 commandments, even their prayers are abomination. This paper says, Asbury Seminary professor says, church historians will determine if outpouring is revival. This is regarding the word outpouring versus revival. An Asbury Theological Seminary professor recently suggested that the word outpouring may be a better word than revival to describe the campus marathon worship services that began at the v Wilmore, Kentucky campus beginning February 18 and have since swept up colleges and universities across the nation and beyond. So they say this is the outpouring of the latter rain. This is not just revival and continues because as I speak, many other campuses, many other universities in the United States are celebrating prayer services, marathon prayer services that are nonstop for many years. Even the Catholic Church is involved. For example, Cardinal Dolan, 
reflects on the success of the Asbury revival. And it says the New York prelate invited Catholics to approach Lent with the same zeal for the faith shown in Kentucky. And the, the movement that began in Asbury University has stopped, is over, but it stopped on, on Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of Lent, 40 days before, before Easter. And this paper says, Asbury revival so far so good, but be watchful. And the author writes, we can rejoice in an ecumenical fashion about what is happening and that the gospel is being preached unless and until we spot anything that would raise a red flag. The movement itself could and may in fact remain ecumenical in so far as it deliberately doesn't make any questionable statements about what the church is or various aspects of theology. And then the author says, I can, and I think should at least at first be centered around things all Christians have in common. So he says, these kind of gatherings, these kind of revivals have to be centered on Christian commonality, on Christians' points of view, common points of view. And then it can possibly have different wings as it proceeds, allowing people of different Christian persuasions to continue to be what they are, similar to the mere Christianity idea of C.S. Lewis, in which there is a whole of common ground, and then everyone goes to their own rooms where they live out and practice their own individual Christian belief systems. So they, this Lewis and this author, they say, this Asbury revival is the gathering in the big hall. It's like gathering in the big hall, coming from all denominations, but the real power is found in this, in the room, in the small room on the sidelines of the big hall. And he says that represents every Christian denomination. But then he says, to follow the analogy, the current revival would be in Lewis Hall, but denomination, denominational affiliation would be the rooms. And then, because this is a Catholic writer, he says the Catholic, of course, the Catholic room contends that the fullness of the Christianity is found in the Catholic rooms while still acknowledging other Trinitarian Nicene Creed Christians as truly Christians and our brethren in the body of Christ. So he says, this gathering is like happening in the big hall of all religions coming together, denominations coming together, but it is in the small rooms. That means in each denomination, that the true Christianity is. And then he says, but it is in the Catholic church that the fullness of Christianity is found because it is Trinitarian according to the Nicene Creed or according to the Council of Nicaea. And then he says, Christians who believe in Trinity, they are true Christians. So this is what he says. Now, this is happening in Abu Dhabi, in United Arab Emirates. Three temples were built, three temples, and inaugurated a few days ago. A mosque for the Muslims, a synagogue for the Jewish people, and a chapel, a, a Catholic chapel for the Catholics. And they say it's for all Christians. So this is happening like, like three denominations, but this is these are three religions. And they say these are the three Abrahamic religions 
and they say they are monotheistic. But will they accept the Holy Spirit? Will the Jewish people accept the Lord Jesus as God? Will the Muslims accept the Holy Spirit as God? They only accept the Father. They do not accept the Son. Neither will they accept the Holy Spirit. But the Roman Catholics, they say we are Trinitarians. And the Christians who accept the Trinity, they are Christians also, but they are daughters of the Mother Church. And they have to come back to the Catholic, the Mother Church. Now, the other question is, shall we accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Or are we going to reject it just because this was also promoted by the Nicene Creed? Just because they use the term uh, Trinity and just because they, they believe in this doctrine and promoted by the emperor Constantine, accepted and promoted by the Roman Catholic Church, are we going to reject it just because they promoted this Nicene Creed? During the Nicene Creed, they also promoted Sunday as a day of worship. Are we going to accept Sunday just because they proclaim part of the truth from the Bible, but they are proclaiming also an error that is from the Roman Empire to worship on Sunday? So that's the issue. We cannot reject something just because it's promoted by the wrong institution or we cannot accept something just because it's promoted by an institution that is preaching some truth from the Bible in regards to the divinity as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This paper says United Arab Emirates inaugurated the country's first synagogue. And it's interesting because the inauguration took place on Thursday and there were Muslim leaders, Jewish leaders, and Roman Catholic leaders. It says the United Arab Emirates inaugurated an interreligious center that houses a mosque, a church, and the first official synagogue in the country, which normalized its relations with Israel and multiplies initiatives to show itself as an open Muslim country. This is part of the ceremony. The Jewish rabbis inauguration, inaugurating the Moses Ben Maimon synagogue. And this is part of the ceremony also. This is the church called His Holiness Francis Church inside the compound in Abu Dhabi. And these are the Muslim leaders, the Jewish leaders, and Roman Catholic leaders. And then it says the Abrahamic family house. This is what is called the Abrahamic family house center with its three monotheistic places of worship. And it was inaugurated on Thursday in the capital Abu Dhabi. So they say these are the three monotheistic places of worship. And they say they, uh, they come from the faith of Abraham. But Abraham, he was, a, he, was a, he was a man of faith. He believed in the Holy Spirit. He believed in the Lord Jesus, the Son, and he believed in the Father. Because he was a Jewish and salvation comes from the Jewish, from the, from the Jews. The Lord Jesus was also a Jew. And he was all, always going to the synagogues on Sabbath, on Saturday, the seventh day of the week, according to the commandments and according to his customs. So the Lord Jesus was a Jew and salvation comes through and from the Lord Jesus, who, who was also a Jew. And of course, Jewish people, the true Jewish people are descendants of Abraham and they worship according to the commandments. And they worship the Father and they worship the Son and the Holy Spirit. But the Jewish people rejected the Lord Jesus as the Messiah. And they reject also the Holy Spirit. What about the Muslims? Will they accept 
the Lord Jesus as God and the Holy Spirit as God? Are they truly monotheistic? This is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And many Jewish people stop here and they say there is only one Lord. But they fail to understand that from Genesis to Revelation, there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For example, in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 16, it says, this is the Lord Jesus speaking. Come ye near unto me. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. And this is Jehovah the Redeemer. In verse 17, you can read it by yourselves at home. Isaiah 48, verse 16 says, I, that, that this person here speaking is our God, the Redeemer, Jehovah the Redeemer. And he says, come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there I am. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So this is Jehovah, the Redeemer, who has been sent by Jehovah, the Lord, God, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. So from the Bible, I, I true Jewish person will accept God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. But Jewish people today, will they accept the truth as it is in the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus and the Father? This paper says United Arab Emirates, Jewish community opens the Moses Ben Maimon Synagogue. And it says, everybody who lives in the United Arab Emirates is wonderfully optimistic about the possibility for Jews, Muslims, Christians, and people to come together with a shared vision, not just the children of Abraham, but all of us, including all, this includes all religions. And it says, with a sense that our, our connection to God brings us closer to each other, that religion is a source of commonality and humanity rather than conflict and that we need to have a real profound optimism about humanity rather than being negative and cynical, says Creel, the author of this paper. So this paper says, Bishop says Abrahamic family house is cry for peace in the world marked by war. So they say this complex of three buildings, three temples, is, this is a witness to the rest of the world. So for them, this is the trinity of witnesses to the whole world, that they are witnessing to peace. And this is Bishop Martinelli conducted the first prayer service at His Holiness Francis Church on what day? Is that according to the commandments? They celebrated the first church service on Sunday to dedicate this chapel, this temple to to the accomplishment of world peace. But this dedication has been done according to the commandments of men, worshiping on Sunday. And not only the Catholic church, but the other religions were also present in their own temples on Sunday. We will read about that shortly. This paper says the head of the Catholic church in the United Arab Emirates has heralded Abu Dhabi's Abrahamic family house as a unifying force. This is as a witness, a unifying force for good and called for religions. This is calling other religions to be the protagonist of peace in a world marred by conflict. So this is a protagonist program or agenda for global peace. They have three witnesses, the mosque, the synagogue, and the Catholic church. 
three witnesses proclaiming a gospel of peace for the world. The Bible says when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon the world. And this is from the word of God. And according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. Three that bear record in heaven. And many people reject this verse. And people do not want to accept Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19 and 20. And they say these are alterations to the Bible. But do they accept Isaiah 48, verse 16? where the Lord Jesus says that the Lord Jehovah God and his spirit have sent him when he came to die for us on the cross. The Lord Jesus died and he was sent by the Father and by the Holy Spirit. But the Lord Jesus has been from the beginning and there was never a time when the Lord Jesus was never present alive because he is eternal, just like the Father and the Holy Spirit. So in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, we read, For there are three that bear record in heaven. Who are they? The Father, the Word, and that Word was made flesh, the Lord Jesus, the Creator also and Redeemer, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But many people are deceived, deceived, and they do not want to accept that the Holy Spirit is with us, that God is with us, that the Lord Jesus is in heaven by the throne of the Father in the most holy place. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8 says, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So this is the fulfillment of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. The Lord God is one. All three agree as one. Even as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven, on earth there are three witnesses. The Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the other comforter who has come because we worship the Creator and we obey the commandments. And the water and the blood. These are the water and the blood that came forth on Calvary's cross came forth from the side of the Lord Jesus, from the Lord Jesus when he was pierced on his side, in his side. As it says in John chapter 19, verse 34, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And of course, when the Lord Jesus died, there was an earthquake. And according to Ron Wyatt, who discovered the Ark of the Covenant under Golgotha's rocks, the rocks were parted, were broken, and the water pushed the blood of the Lord Jesus onto the Ark of the Covenant underneath the cross. And these are the two witnesses plus the Holy Spirit here on earth that bear record on earth. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 15, it says that the Holy Spirit is the witness whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. So is the water, the blood, the water, and the Holy Spirit as witnesses. In counterposition to these three witnesses, the mosque, the synagogue, and the Catholic temple. These are three witnesses that bear witness to the global peace and also to the Sunday movement, because all religions will worship on Sunday. All religions will be worshiping on the Sunday. And this paper says the opening ceremony will be followed by a conference on Friday, on Friday morning on relations between the faiths. The local Jewish community will hold a Shabbat prayers in the synagogue led by Chief Rabbi Yehuda Sarna. So these are gatherings on Friday and Muslims worship on Friday. And they will have uh, meetings for relations between religions, between faith. And the Jewish people, they will have their Shabbat or Sabbath prayers. 
But it's interesting that on Sunday, all three religions were having a ceremony on this complex of three religions, three Abrahamic religions. This paper says on Sunday, a Torah, Torah scroll donated by United Arab Emirates, President Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan, will be brought to the synagogue in a dedication ceremony. So the synagogue was dedicated on Sunday. So this is the opening to a Sunday movement. This is the inaugural dedication ceremony of a Jewish synagogue on Sunday, but this is also the beginning of a Sunday movement, Sunday worship. And these are the three religions having their ceremonies on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, Sunday morning. And what about Israel? Because they are proposing or promoting Sunday as a day of rest. This paper says, heal Israel's divisions by giving Sunday off for everyone. This is the opinion that is accepted by the majority of the population in Israel. And it says, declare Sunday as a weekly day of rest for the country. And this is a proposal that has long been discussed at various times over the last years. The majority of Israelis will support it. And not only Israel, also the Muslims and the rest of the world. That's why these are the three witnesses, the three witnesses towards global peace and unity. And it's interesting because the structures of these temples is close to similar, close in similarity to the temple of the Jewish people, the temple, the Herod temple, the second temple. This is what these temples look like. And this is what the Jewish people looked like. This is the temple that was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. So this is, this is similar to the Jewish temple. And what do they want? What they have done in Abu Dhabi, they want to do in Jerusalem. They want to have three temples in Jerusalem. And remember that before the Lord, the Lord Jesus comes, even Satan will appear to all religions in different places of the world, in different places of worship, saying that the, the Messiah has come, that, that the Lord Jesus has come for the Christians and they will promote Sunday as a day of worship, that all religions, religions should worship on Sunday, that this is, the, that this is the power that will unify the whole world, that will bring peace by worshiping on Sunday. So they are promoting this. And this is the plan. They want to build this, the third temple in Jerusalem. But they say there is, there, is a, there is a problem. On the site of the temple, there is a mosque. There is, there is the third most important mosque for the Islamic people, for the Muslims. But the Jewish people, they claim that this is the very same spot, the very same place where the temple of Israel was built. This is the place where Solomon's temple was built. And this was the temple that was rebuilt and that was beautified by Herod the Great. And they say, how can we build the temple again? And they, they ask a question, can the third temple be built without destroying the dome of the rock. This is the dome of the rock. But they say we have a solution. The new Jewish interfaith initiative hopes to show that Jewish, Jewish people, the Jewish people end of day's vision could harmoniously accommodate Islam's present architectural hege hegemony on the Temple Mount. So they say, yes, we can be together, we can build a, a Catholic church and also a Jewish temple in the same spot, in the same place. But they ask another question, do Israeli Jews 
really seek to demolish Al-Aqsa Mosque. And there is an answer from one activist, Raziela Harpos, a religious activist said he, she has, or, or he has no such intention because God will do it. He says, God will destroy that temple in order for us to build a Jewish temple. And this is Palestinian authority. Palestinian authority accuses Israel of trying to build a new temple on Temple Mount. And this is because the security minister or the minister for defense of Israel went walking around the Temple Mount, around the mosque, the, the, the dome of the rock. So they say Palestinian prime minister, Mohammed Steyer, accused Israel of trying to turn the Al-Aqsa Mosque on Temple Mount into the site of a new Jewish temple following Itamar Ben-Giver visit to the Jerusalem holy site on Tuesday morning. And indeed, this caused many troubles, many people fighting each other and many people dead because of turmoil and because of a, a Jewish person being killed by the Palestinian and then the Jewish people killed more Palestinians. And the, the government, the Israel, is, Israeli government says, the Temple Mount will be shut to Jewish people at Ramadan's end, despite Ben Giver's dissent. So they don't want any presence of Jewish people around the Temple Mount during Ramadan. But remember, Pope Francis visited Israel and he wants to visit Israel again. That was his plan last year. But here, this paper says, churches urged to act against anti-Semitism including by scrutinizing their own practices. And this is a group dedicated to solidarity between Christians and Jews. And they issue a statement declaring the United States currently facing greatest crisis of public anti-Semitism in a century. But here we see something special. This paper portrays a photograph of Pope Francis receiving the embrace of a Jewish rabbi. And this is on the time of his visit to Israel in 2014. And it's interesting because last year he was planning to return to Israel in, in, a, in a lapse of time of just nine years of the papacy of Pope Francis, he wanted to visit Israel twice but he canceled and he wanted to visit Israel and to meet with the Russian Orthodox Patriarch, but he canceled it. Pope Francis canceled upcoming Israel trip in 2022, but he wants to go to Israel. For what purpose? Because the same plan that has taken place in Abu Dhabi, building three temples in one complex they want to do it on Temple Mount. They want to do the building of the Roman Catholic Church and the Jewish temple on, on the side of the Muslim mosque. This paper talks about the turmoils and violence happening in Jerusalem. It says church leaders in Jerusalem renew appeal for peace in the Holy Land. And then it says 63 Palestinians and 13 Israelis killed since the beginning of 2022. And this is the mosque and this is the Temple Mount. And it says what lies below Jerusalem's dome of the rock? And this is a question because they want to push forward the plan of building the third temple, the Jewish temple. So they ask what lies below? And this is the writing. And it says to Al-Tabari am beholden. For this proof 
to all deniers that underneath thy dome, that golden, a Jewish temple lies. And then he says, they are liars. And then he says, I am taught these ancient data by Rabbi Mir Soloven Soloveskis, who wrote ancient Muslims wouldn't deny that Jewish claims were completely true. Are these Jewish claims completely true that there is a Jewish temple underneath the dome of the rock, underneath this mosque, Al-Aqsa Mosque? Is that true? Well, we have to ask the scriptures if that's true because the Lord Jesus says, no, it's not true. In Matthew chapter 24, verse one, it says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the, the buildings of the temple. What was the answer of the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse two? Responding, the Lord Jesus said, you see all these things? I surely say to you that there shall be no stone upon a stone that shall not be demolished. So there is not a stone upon a stone. There is no such thing as a Jewish temple. And of course, there used to be a Jewish temple there before. And this paper says, archeologists race against time in Jerusalem. Why? That's the question why and for what purpose they are racing against time. They say, one of Israel's leading archeologists working on the pilgrimage road excavation near Jerusalem's Temple Mount said that with so much new construction underway around the holy city, the rush is on to document and preserve the past before it's too late. But they know before it's too late, that means they need and they have the urgency to build the third Jewish temple. That's the plan. And to build also the Roman Catholic Church. But they continue saying, one of the major projects getting a lot of attention over the last decade is the discovery of what is believed to be a 2000 year old pilgrim walking path or stepped street in Jerusalem city of David National Park area. And then this is the real issue because the plan is to unearth a path that is underneath the earth that leads to the Temple Mount, that leads to the mosque. And it says, it connects the pool of Siloam in East Jerusalem to the foot of the Temple Mount at the site of the holiest site in Judaism and one of the holy places for Muslims as well. The Temple Mount with its dome of the rock and the nearby Al-Aqsa Mosque is considered the third holiest site in Islam. But they are rushing against time because they want to unearth this underground path that leads to the to the Temple Mount. And if it leads them to Temple Mount, they will also unearth some of the ruins, ruins of the old Jerusalem temple, the Jewish temple. And they will say, this is our place and we will build in this place. But they don't want to destroy the mosque. They just want to, to have three temples together to continue to press forward a witness of peace and safety in the world. And this paper says, Pope Francis calls for preserving the historic and legal status quo in occupied Jerusalem. Yes, and he says, he stressed that the holy city belongs to the three monotheistic religions. Once again, calling to the conscience or calling to to the minds of people saying this place is not, is not belonging to just one religion. This place belongs to three religions. 
and they have the urgency to protect it and also to protect it for the purpose of building two other temples for what they say, the three monotheistic religions. So the, this is the plan. This is the plan of the Roman power. But are they monotheistic? This paper says Orthodox Christians believe in one God, in Trinity. But it's interesting that in Roman Catholicism, they worship the saints and they pray to the saints. The Bible says, no, you, we pray to the Father in heaven. We only pray to one person, to the Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And of course, we worship the Holy Spirit and we worship the Lord Jesus as God and also the Father. But they worship Mary and they pray to Mary. And they have Mary as redemptor, as redeemer or, or co-redeemer, redem redemptor. Redeemer. So do they believe in, mono, in monotheism? Are they monotheistic when they have every saint with the attributes for, for praying to them according to the attributes? They pray to Saint Lucia, for example, when somebody has an accident in his eyes. They pray to Saint John if they need to have a good relationship in their in their marriage or or wedding, and they pray to each different saint according to the attributes that they give. But this is something they inherited from Romanism and from Greek religions. This paper says the Council of Nicaea, pagan emperor Constantine used Christianity to unite church and state, and here we have the document or the creed of the Nicene Council. And in this Nicene Council, they promoted the, the creed of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And people reject, many people reject the, the doctrine of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because they say this is from Roman Catholic, the Council of Nicaea. But it happens that this Council of Nicaea also established Sunday as a day of worship. And now they will they will they accept that this council promoted heresy by promoting Sunday as a day of worship against the commandment of God to worship on the Sabbath on, on the seventh day of the week. And of course, that's a heresy. But just because the same system is promoting the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make it heresy because the Bible teaches that there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But my brother, my sister, many people are confused and they reject the Holy Spirit. And this paper says the Council of Nicaea did not create the, the canon of scripture. That's true. One idea that has yielded dangerous consequences is the notion that the Council of Nicaea, AD 325, under the authority of the Roman Emperor Constantine, established the Christian biblical canon. That's a lie. Satan preaches with the Bible. Satan, when he was cast out from a person coming to the synagogue on the Sabbath, the Lord Jesus cast out the evil spirit, the devil. And the devil confessed that the Lord Jesus is the Holy One of God, that he is the Holy One of the Most High. But just because Satan confesses that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God, that the Lord Jesus is the Holy One of the Father, are we going to reject the doctrine that the Lord Jesus is, is Lord and Jehovah and that the Lord Jesus is the creator and that he is the son of God just because Satan is saying this truth or just because a system is proclaiming that there is the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, are we going to reject it? Are we going to, to accept as truth that the council of Nicaea is authority above the scriptures? 
that the Council of Nicaea establishes, establishes the canon of scripture. That's wrong. That's error. The canon of the scriptures has been established by the Holy Spirit, who is the witness, who is the one that bears record on earth, the Holy Spirit. So this is the pool of Siloam. And they say, now the path has been unearthed, has been uncovered, and we need to go to the Temple Mount. But this pool of Siloam, they say, was used by pilgrims, pilgrims who walked to the Temple Mount, to the temple, and they purified themselves by washing their feet in the, Silo, in the pool of Siloam. And this is, is like a mini baptism. But here they have three witnesses. They say these are three witnesses and these three witnesses will push forward the plan to reach the Temple Mount, to reach the Temple Mount through the Siloam system of waters and through the underground passage they will lead or they will they will proceed to the temple mount and these are three witnesses but they want to establish three witnesses in jerusalem and dear brothers and sisters in heaven there are three witnesses and on earth there are three witnesses according to the bible according to the holy spirit and this we also have in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 91. Baptism is a most solemn renunciation of the world. Those who are baptized in the threefold name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, at the very entrance of the Christian life, declare publicly that they have forsaken the service of Satan and have become members of the royal family, children of the heavenly king. So when we are baptized, we are baptized in the threefold name. This is threefold name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But many people reject the Holy Spirit. And they say, oh, Ellen White did not believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a big lie. And this is just an example because there are many quotes in the testimonies for the church in regard to the threefold name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is another example. Testimonies for the church, volume six, page 99. And it says, the fact that you have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is an assurance that if you will claim their help, these powers will help you in every emergency. Remember how we began this message, the three powers of heaven, the three great powers of heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three powers will help you in every emergency. This is in testimonies for the church. What about Matthew chapter 28, verse 19? Many people say, oh, this is alteration of the scriptures. They want to hear the wrong message of the wrong people. There are those who, who falsely declare themselves Jewish. And they say they are Jewish, but they are synagogue of Satan preaching a different gospel. The infiltrators preaching a different gospel to, to make havoc in the Christian church and in, in, in the faith, to destroy the, the true faith of the Lord Jesus. But in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, we read, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Is this, is this back, backed up by the, Holy, by the spirit of prophecy? Of course it is. And this is just one example where Sister White mentions 
Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. You type the word Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and you will find an innumerable quotes from the spirit of prophecy. And this is a proof that the spirit of prophecy accepts Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. In Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 20, we read, the commission has been given to us. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So it is a big lie to say that Ellen White was against the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of the divinity in three persons. Therefore, my brother, my sister, pay close attention to what the Holy Spirit says. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, we read, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. This is the Lord Jesus saying, Even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father, in his throne. And some people say, but Ellen White saw, she saw only two thrones in heaven. Yes, of course, because who is here on earth? The Holy Spirit is here on earth. But if he was in heaven, there would be three thrones in heaven. So Revelation chapter three has been revealed by the Holy Spirit. The whole Bible has been written by inspiration by the Holy Spirit. So Revelation 3.21, let me repeat, this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this is the saying of the Lord Jesus, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I, I also overcame, and I am sat down with my father in his throne. And verse 22, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say, says unto the churches. So the Lord Jesus is again saying, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. My brother, my sister, if you have deviated from the truth, if you have accepted the wrong gospel, against the Father and against the Son and against the Holy Spirit, it is still time for you to repent, to turn back and say, dear Lord Jesus, I repent. And I, I accept the Holy Spirit as God as much as I, I accept the Lord Jesus as God, as Jehovah the Redeemer, and the Father as God, as Jehovah the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, for the ministration and intercession of our Lord Jesus. We pray for forgiveness of our sins. We pray for help. Help us to accept the three great powers of heaven that bear record in heaven according to the writings in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, to the, according to the writings of the prophets and according to the writings of the early church and the apostles. Help us, dear Father, we pray in the name of your Lord Jesus and to him be the honor and the glory. Amen. We thank you so much, my brothers and sisters. May God bless us as we continue to proclaim the present truth. May God bless us until the coming of your Lord Jesus.